Okay guys, we're on the surface plate here and we got our gib out of our machine and we want to determine the taper per foot and I'm going to show everybody how I how I did it and I think it's a pretty accurate way. I blewed up the back of my gib and I took my little stare at 6 inch rule. Uh, it's a fairly accurate rule. Uh, laid it on the back and scribed, you know, two lines. So they're 6 inches apart. Took my little indicator and I zeroed it on the thinnest part of the gib at the line. And travel along at six inches. You know, 125 thousandths. So, I mean, that's, uh, I think that's pretty standard. That's an eighth of an inch per six inches or a quarter inch per foot. And I believe that's, uh, that's what the uh, texts say, the machinery text. We also checked our side angles. You know. And, uh, I believe they're, you know, 30 degrees. And that's, uh, you know, both of them. So we'll have to cut those in also. But they're just rough cut. I mean, these are, you know, I guess just to roughly determine the thickness of the gib. So I don't know how critical it is that we get that, you know, uh, as accurate as we needed to get the actual taper, you know. Okay, guys, here's our taper cutting setup. On the table, this is a little stair at six inch scale, and I got some dicum here with two little lines in it that are as close to six inches apart as I can get it. First, I wanted to determine that my ram was moving six inches. So I put my little uh, scribe, I put my scribe in here from my surface uh, uh, gauge. And I moved the ram back and forth, you know, adjusting the stroke until this pointer of the scribe stopped on the lines that I had made. And I was fairly confident that that, that was, you know, that that's six inches, or as close as I can get it. There's probably a better way to do it. I'm no machinist. I just uh, play one on YouTube. But uh, after we did that, you know, we adjusted the table, tilted it, until... You know, we've determined that this is six inches. We put our little stair at 196 indicator in there, and we moved, we adjusted the table until we had 125 thousandths difference in between the stop and start points. And I'm pretty happy that uh, that will give us the taper that we need for the gib. Um, there's probably better ways to do this, but, uh, you know, I don't have a, uh, of course, a six inch uh, plunger indicator, which I don't know that they even make. So. This is the best way I could come up with, you know, to, to get the desired taper. And I'm pretty confident that, uh, you know, this is going to work. Now all we need to do is uh, get our part on the table and start cutting. Uh, we know that, you know, our gives a little thin the, uh, the, because of the scraping and the wear that, uh, that it had. So, this gib, we're going to have to make it a little thicker. Um, and, you know, I didn't know a great way to determine how much thicker it needed to be. So what I did was I took it out of the compound. And, you know, I slid it in with some shim stock. You know, I, had, I got the 10 and 15 thousandths of shim stock and the long pieces. And, uh... It was basically in between those two, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this give about 12 thousandths of an inch thicker uh, than the original. And the original is uh, on the thin end is 195 thousandths of an inch. So. If we, you know, this material is much longer than what we need. And if we cut this down, this thin end down to 200 thousandths, we know that somewhere in, in this material uh, will be the right length, length, you know, of give. And once I rough the give out, I'll cut it to width, cut the tapers on the sides, and then we'll slide it in the machine. I'll mark it 
where I want it to be as far as length. I'll drive it in, you know, uh, you know get it to where I want it, uh, scrape it a little bit to get it to fit in, you know, proper, where it's going to at least, you know, seat proper. I don't want to, you know, have a fairly rough finish on it and then it, it you know, it, have to scrape it and then it get thinner and, and come out of adjustment or, or out of the range that I want it in. So I'm going to cut this to 200 thousandths thick on the, on the thin end and, you know, cut it, cut the sides, drive it in like I said. So that's how I determined, you know, how much uh, thicker the give needs to be is, is using just a long shim stock, sliding it up, driving it in and, uh, you know, that, uh, that way I'm, I'm not necessarily guessing, although I am somewhat. So 200 thousandths thick on the thin end, uh, and I'll, I won't bore you with the, with the back and forth of the shaper. I'll, uh, I'll cut this down and uh, okay, I'll bring guys. it back and check. Here we are on the shaper table, and we've made our straight line cuts. You know, you didn't miss anything, just back and forth with the, with the uh, cutter until we got her determined. Uh, like we said, 200 thousandths uh, on the thin end. We took our we took our give out of our machine, and uh, I'm gonna lay it, you know, beside it until I get a, you know, same height at one point, and then you know I'm just checking for deviation just to make sure we got our, uh, you know, taper right, and and I'm I'm pretty happy with that. It, it turned out actually pretty good. Uh, the finish is is is, is decent. You know we're going to scrape that anyway, but uh, the finish is decent and shouldn't take a lot of work to get uh, to get to the finish that we want. Um, <clears throat> what you're seeing here, you know, wrapped around the uh, shaper table, is just leather. It's a it's a big long piece of leather. It's actually multiple pieces of leather that are stitched together off an off an old you know leather sofa that we owned, um, and I use it to cover the uh, machine surfaces on the shaper when I'm Especially when I'm machining cast iron, you know this stuff is, is it breaks up so fine, and just the slightest breeze will blow it back onto the you know the machine surfaces, and uh, you know gets in between them and acts just like a sandpaper. You know, you talk about causing some premature wear. You know, so that's what we use. And, and you know, I'd seen that uh, I believe I'm going to butcher his name, but it's Stefan Gottswinner. Uh, I believe he used leather on. Uh, on his lathe, and it and it's a fairly heat resistant uh, material, you know, for chips and it's oil resistant. So, you know, it's almost an ideal uh, material for for this purpose. I mean, otherwise this stuff was just going to get thrown away. So we repurposed it and and used it, uh, you know, to cover our uh, machine surfaces. What we got to do next, you know, is cut uh, cut our sides. You know, like I said, they're they're just rough machine, but uh, I think they need to be pretty accurate. You know, as far as thickness, you know, uh, when you slide this up in the in the uh, in the compound, these edges are you know real close to touching. You know, on both sides, so so we need to get that right. And uh, I believe the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to take this part, slide it over to the edge of the shaper table, set our compound up at the at, at the uh, right angle, and we'll cut this side. Then what I'll do is uh, part this off, and probably hold it with these clamps, flip it, and then cut it on the uh, other side. You know, making a give is a fairly complex deal. You know, that's probably why you don't see much information on it, especially you know on YouTube. You know, I'm no professional machinist by any stretch. I'm just a home shop guy, but, uh, you know, we're just going to do it one step at a time. And if we, if we're careful, you know, I think we'll get pretty good results. The gib's broken on this end, so we don't really know exactly what it looked like originally, but we do have, you know, the end part where the uh, adjustment screw rests. So we, so we have a, a determined distance between here and here. So we can get an accurate distance there. Where at we're going to put that on here, we don't quite know. That'll be one of the last things we do. Once we get this cut to size, we'll run it up into the uh, compound, and then we'll determine, you know, where we need, you know, our uh, adjustment screws to be. 
the head of those adjustment screws is 9 16 of an inch. And uh, I'm not exactly for sure uh, if I have a uh, 9 16 end mill. <laughs> Chances are I don't, uh, but uh, we'll see. And uh, it'll probably be pretty interesting as how we hold that, you know, how we determine our depth you know, of cut and, uh, and exactly where we put them. But uh, that'll, be, that'll be in a future, future step. So. We'll probably just, uh, you know, try to mimic as close as we can this end, but it'll just be flat. We're not going to try to, you know, taper it. I don't even think that, uh, like this one, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, it doesn't show, and to be honest, it doesn't matter. Nothing's supporting it after this point anyway, uh, due to the breakage and the, uh, what I call the carrier. So we're just going to bring it out a little longer, you know, enough to support the head of the screw like this one is, and, uh, and just cut it off flat. That's the plan anyway. You know, that subject to change just like all of it. But uh, that's the plan we got. So that's what we're going to go with. I'm going to get this part set up at the edge of the table, and I'll uh, bring you back and show. Okay, guys, we trimmed we trimmed the table back in. We indicated the table back in with this little 196. Man, if if you don't if you have a shaper and you don't have one of these, I really think you're missing out. The little the button bottom the uh, the extra indicator ends, the little vice holder, the snug. It's really a great setup for a shaper. And in, in, in a way, I believe it's ideal. But anyway, uh, we've got a dial indicator here held with a no-go on the clapper. we got our part hanging off the uh, table just slightly. And we indicated it in straight with the, uh, with the line of the shaper. That's the way we, uh, you know, determine that our parts, you know, set straight. You know, we're not going to cut crooked. You know, and after this, you know, we'll get a, we'll get a cutter set up, and I'll bring you back and show you, you know, the cutter. We'll Here's what we're going to do to cut the taper on the side. You know, you already seen that we trimmed this part in with the movement of the ram. This is not ideal. Uh, we got a lot of overhang here, but this is a, this is a fairly uh, one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. It's a Williams number 42 uh, multiple angle cutter holder. And for the cutter, we just got a simple right to left, uh, you know, cutting tool with a slight radius on the end. And we're going to just, uh, you know, work the compound uh, back and forth till we get the depth that we want. And uh, I think that'll be satisfactory. Anytime you tilt your compound, uh, you want to make sure you've got clearance. Uh, it's going back into the body of the shaper. Uh, you can tell this one has already hit before. It wasn't done by me. Uh, it was probably, you know, of course it was one of the previous owners. But it didn't cause any damage on this side, but uh, you could easily, you know, carry your compound up like this one uh, had been done in the past. So. A little word of caution. Uh, go slow if you're uh, uh, cutting the taper with your compound. You can damage it. Just really, just like that, real quick. So, a little word of the wise. We are just hand feeding down here. Hand feed at the back of the stroke. You know, taking about 20 thousandths. Depth, cut, probably 10 thousandths, 20 thousandths per stroke. It's like we don't have a real rigid setup here, so we don't want to get any chatter. It's not, but it wouldn't be hard to get. We're just going to continue working this until, uh, until we get a taper all the way through. And uh, I'll bring you back and show you the results. Well, we got this uh, taper cut, or this uh, angle. Here's our uh, old gib. Yeah, so we should have plenty of material. I wish I would have cut this a little wider, but it ain't no problem. I can part off up in here. We've got plenty of material here. I just got to be careful when I, you know, Free this from the uh, from the 
bulk stock. But, uh, you know, we got it uh, same angle, so we should be good, you know. We just got to be careful from this point on. We didn't come this far to, to mess up now, so we will uh, part this off and uh, then I'll uh, bring it back and let you see.